Welcome back to the sidecast. Episode 40. Yay! Episode 40! Welcome back! 40 episodes, you guys. Wow! Yeah, wow, we are flying! We are flying, is All right. right. 41. I know. Incredible. How do you feel about 40 episodes? Good. I think we should have a big party. Yes. What do you want to do for our big 40th party? Well, we are having it right now because we are oh. drinking... We are but drinking we're coffee not, and juice. Let's make it clear. But we're not eating. We're, we're not, not eating, eating. So I guess it's not a party without food for normal. Maybe for our 52nd episode for one year. We could yeah. Have. Remember what we did yeah, for the New Year's? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Remember what we did for the New Year's? Did we have food for the New Year's? That was fun. Yes, we did. And party hats. That's my favorite episode. <laughs> and the holy donut was beautiful. Thank you. I'm okay. The holy donut was beautiful. So, what's new? What's new, guys? What's going on? Steaming hot pudding. Steaming hot pudding. What about it? I don't know. Just some words you like to say? Yeah. It's cool. like a, what do you call the poetry when you just get up there and... Freeform. Yeah. <laughs> You're like a freeform artist. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do Steaming for the 4th of July? Go to um, Mindjohn Hill or one of those parks over there with my team. The Eastern Prom? Yeah. Nice. You watch the fireworks? Oh, yeah. Do you like fireworks or are you afraid? Uh, um, I, I like fireworks. Sorry, Jeff is trying to hold Pete's hand. It's a little weird. Yeah. So now we're done. Jeff, step holding Pete's hand. Yeah, she's <laughs> right on my ear. Show, dude. <laughs> All right. Can we do that again? Uh, I, I show will today. fire you in 10 minutes. That's right. Producer says yeah. he will fire you in 10 minutes. The producer is going to fire you. That's oh, right. God, I don't know. Oh, yeah. oh, episode us. 40 is off to a strong start. Incredible. Who is our guest today? Um, it's Peter. Dan Habib, Habib is our guest and today. You know we haven't even introduced ourselves yet. Oh my goodness. Oh. Who oh, are we? Are we? Oh, oh, are you, dude. oh my god. That's, it's your show. Yeah, you Noel guys Thompson. do it. Oh, Noel Thompson. Hello. Hello. How, how do you do? Really good. I'm Who are you? Amigo. Who are you, sir? Um, I'm a big bear. I like Big Ben. Oh. Big Ben? Uh, I, Big Ben or Big Bear? I'm a ring bearer. Ring bearer. Ring bearer. At a wedding? Who are you going to uh, marry? At yeah, Pete's wedding. Pete already got married. Yeah. I know, but I was there. For no, you yeah. weren't. I don't think so. Nice. Anyway, welcome to the Stripecast. <laughs> <laughs> Big Bear, Ring Bear, whoever you are. Why can't you? All right. Oh, I think you be Who are you? I like it. Neat. I'm Olivia. Right. Probably checked it. And we're up. And that's Susie over there. Right. Susie, our producer. We got a little bit of a change today. Yeah. So hopefully you'll hear this someday <laughs> because our sound engineer Ryan is on vacation. That's He's actually it. celebrating his anniversary today. Happy yeah. anniversary, Ryan and Hillary. Happy anniversary, Ryan Benton. Big Ryan Benton. Okay. So our guest today is Dan Habib. He is a filmmaker, and he works at the University of New Hampshire. Yeah. And he I made makes... movies. What? I made movies. You can ask him. You can ask him. He's made a bunch of movies. He's been nominated for a bunch of awards, including an Emmy Award, which is oh. really exciting. Um, and he makes movies all about people with intellectual disabilities and various other types of disabilities. So we're really excited to talk to him about all the movies. Yeah, he's made. actually been on the White House Council for People with Intellectual Disabilities right. as well, and nominated by President Obama. So yeah. it's a big guest for the Strive Cast. Yeah, this is a big deal, you guys. Um, so very excited to, t- to talk to him when we come back, yeah, I guess. we'll have his bio when we come back. That's right, so we'll be right back. Yes. Okay, we're back, and here's Noel with a bio for our guest, Dan Habib. Dan Habib. <laughs> Dan Habib is the creator creator of the award-winning documentary films, including Samira, who cares cares about Kelsey, and many other films on disability related related topics. He is a filmmaker at the University of the New of New Hampshire. 
his m- most recent film called Intelligent. Intelligent Lives. Look at the no at um, society society now ideas of the no of intelligent intelligence yeah. intelligence Dan and his wife Betsy lives Live. lives new, in New Hampshire with their sons, Isaiah and Samuel. Please welcome Dan Levy. Yay! Hello. Welcome! <laughs> Thanks for joining Thank us, you. Dan. Thank you. Glad yeah. to be with you all. Awesome. <laughs> Noel, you want to go first? How, how and when did you know you wanted to be, be a filmmaker? Well, uh, you know, I didn't become a filmmaker until about 13, 14 years ago. I was a a photojournalist for 20 years, taking pictures for newspapers and magazines, and I never really planned to become a filmmaker. But um, about, oh, about 15 years ago, I started working on a film called Including Samuel, and uh, that's about my son Samuel. And I did it because... Samuel was about two years old. We realized he had a disability, and we were so passionate about having him included in school and every aspect of society, and I thought a film would be a good way to tell the story of his, uh, of his life and, and, our, and our efforts to make sure he was included everywhere. So I also wanted to do films because it's just such an accessible medium. You know, it's all kinds of people, all kinds of ages. It's just something that lots of people can enjoy and experience together or separately, and... Um, that's why I decided to do a film. So that's, that's how it all came together. Wow, that's amazing. And we actually have some questions about your movie, including Samuel, coming up soon. So sure. Jeff, you have the next question. Uh, why did you start making films about people with, dis- with disabilities? Well, of course, everything in my life is in terms of my professional life, really started with my son Samuel. He's um, he's 19 now, and um, I'll, I thought maybe I'll talk a little bit more about him in a bit. But he, um, you know, I, because I'm a parent of a, a child with a disability, our life really is full of decisions we have to make and things we have to figure out, and um, and and also really incredible people we've met who have disabilities. And I've just met so many awesome people and and, but there's also so many challenging issues around education employment relationships so i think i could um i always find that the topics i I capture in the films are really interesting to me and i think they have a lot of relevance to society they mean a lot to a lot of other people and i think i can keep doing stories about people with disabilities for 100 years and never run out of great stories so i I love it it's just really really meaningful to me both professionally and personally to focus on the topic of disability yeah, wow. And it, yeah, certainly could go on and on for <laughs> forever making these types of films. So thank you for doing them because they're really sure. incredible. Noel, you have the next one. Yeah. Tell us about your film. Including? Including Samuel. What was it like making a movie ab- about your son? Well, it was... It was- challenging at times it was it was really it was a movie i just felt compelled to do you know i just felt so passionate about it and i had another full-time job at the time as director of a newspaper of a photography department of a newspaper so it was hard to juggle both of these things this was like i said about 14 15 years ago that i started making including sam when it came out 11 years ago so i think one of the hardest things was i was always deciding okay should i be dad now and just hang out and play with samuel and my older son isaiah or should mm-hmm. i be the filmmaker and should i document this with my camera plus i was taking both still photographs and video for the film and it was hard to decide which camera to use at different times right um but but ultimately i also decided not just to focus on samuel but to focus on four other individuals who are experiencing disability in different ways and at different ages and different kinds of disabilities just to show a, a, a really wide range of experiences around both disability and also around education and employment and relationships. You know, people like Keith Jones, who's in the film, and he got married while I was filming and ended up having a child. He actually has four kids now. Wow. <laughs> and, um, and he's just a funny guy. And he's also African-American, and he presents um, a perspective on... on 
things that African American people with disabilities might experience that that whites don't. For instance, right. he uses a wheelchair, and people often ask them, "When did you get shot?" And oh they just my assume gosh. he was a victim of gun, gun violence because he was black. He right. is black, and that's something that I, you know, my son Samuel doesn't experience as a white per, a white young man using a wheelchair. Right. So, you know, there's really a lot of things that came out that I learned about doing that doing that film that I never would have learned if I hadn't taken on the topic. And then it just it really just took off, and it's been translated to 17 languages now. Wow. It's used all over the world as as a tool for inclusive education it's been on public television so yeah it's been it's been a great ride and it really launched my whole career as a filmmaker that's incredible that's right guys that's wow really cool. that's yeah. awesome yeah um uh, do you remember a, a movie about it? yeah we can yeah. talk about that movie after jeff has your, the next your turn, one jeff. Your, your last latest yep. Not that your last that's film intelligent intelligent lives lives show three young people with disabilities can you tell us uh, more about them. them and what the film is about Good. sure thanks for the question um, intelligent lives my most recent film and um, you know, I did I did a film in between, a couple of films in between, including Samuel and Intelligent Lives. So I'll, let me just talk about that for a minute because those are important as to why I did Intelligent Lives. But um, I started uh, a film called Who Cares About Kelsey back in about 2010, so about nine years ago. And I wanted to do a film about people with different type of disability than Samuel, people that have uh, like an emotional or behavioral disability that's not always visible, right? People might have anxiety or depression or mental health issues that not everyone would know about just by looking at them. Like when you see Samuel, it's obvious, right? He has a wheelchair, he rolls into a room, but you see someone like Kelsey who's got a lot of anger and a lot of frustration, and you don't know that there's a lot of stuff going on that is, that doesn't, that isn't obvious, you know, in, right. in her body, in her life. And so that film came out in 2013, Who Cares About Kelsey? And that was also on TV, on public television, and nominated for an Emmy and other things. I did a lot of screenings. But the, the, the one group that still I hadn't really, really focused on specifically was um, students, with, uh, in, uh, students and adults with intellectual disability. Yeah. And the reality is that that group of people who have a label of intellectual disability is the most segregated group in this country. You know, only 17% of students with intellectual disability are included in regular classes. Yeah. Only 40% will graduate, and then only 15% have regular jobs. So those are really too low, you know, yeah. all those stats. And I wanted to do a film that challenged the whole notion that, that people with, disabilities, with intellectual disabilities should be segregated. You know, they should be included in school, in education, in higher education, in employment, in relationships. And so how do you get there, right? And so one thing I tried to do with this film was challenge the whole notion of IQ testing, yeah. you know, that there's any one way to measure a person's intelligence or, or their ability to contribute to the world in lots of amazing ways. And then I wanted to show what it looked like when people had really genuine opportunities to be included in school, in college, in work, in relationships. And I found these three amazing people, Micah, Nair, and Naomi, who are all living very full lives at different ages in different parts of the country, but all of them have something in common, which is a strong belief in themselves yeah. and also people around them with high expectations and really good structures of support to help them achieve things like go to college, be included in regular high school and work yeah. and be in relationships. So that's what the film's about. It's been really exciting. I'm showing that around the country right now and it's going to be on public television in October. That's awesome. so great. And you've been to Portland a couple of times showing that film as well, right? You've been up Yeah, I've been nice. to Portland, I've been to Bangor. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've done some screenings in Maine and, and a lot of people are hosting their own screenings all over the country. Yeah, so I, sometimes I go to the screenings, but there's been hundreds of screenings happening without me as well. So wow. it's been really exciting. I have a quick unscripted question, if that's okay. I saw okay, um, sure. in the film that 49 out of 50 states were still using IQ tests to determine, you know, levels of, of disabilities and things like that. Is that still right. the, is that number still correct? As far as I know, that's, yeah. that's correct. There's mm -hmm. one state we learned about, Iowa, that doesn't rely on an IQ test in order to get 
student services. Right. Like if the student needs, student has an intellectual disability, they can still get services without taking an IQ test. And gotcha. as far as we know, that's the only state that does that. Gotcha. I wanted to check in to see <laughs> what, if anything has changed. Um, I think it's our turn on this side. Yep. See right here. What was the biggest challenge while working on intelligent intelligent lives? Well, I'd say the biggest challenge is, is always finding the right people to film. And I knew Micah, I don't know if you've all seen the film or not, but I, I, I knew Micah Bialka Feldman, one of the stars, for quite a while, like seven or eight years. And he just was a great guy. He's going to college. He's you know got a girlfriend in the film. He's teaching classes. He's got a great circle of friends. And he was given an IQ of 40 when he was a kid, you know, which is considered a pretty low IQ. So it, it just shows you how meaningless it is that he's doing all these great things. And he was given this very low IQ score, which for some people would mean, oh, no, of course you can't go to college or, you know, you can't work. But for him, it has never been an obstacle. Uh, and then Nair I learned about because he goes to just a really fantastic school in Boston that's completely inclusive of students of all abilities, a public school. Yeah. And, I, and I met Nair, just thought he was a really amazing artist and person, so I filmed him. But the hardest person to find, the biggest challenge was finding Naomi because I wanted to find someone who is transitioning from a paid, um, I'm sorry, transitioning from a sheltered workshop, which you may have heard of as a place where people with disabilities are often working alongside just other people with disabilities, not in the regular community and regular jobs. And they're, they're being phased out around the country because they're very segregated, but a lot of people still are part of these segre you know, sheltered workshops. Right. But I wanted to find someone who is transitioning from a sheltered workshop into a regular paid integrated inclusive job yeah. but also somebody who had down syndrome because that's a big part of the intellectual disability community and i wanted to find a woman because i already had two guys on board <laughs> and it was hard to find all those things in one person yeah. so it's been i spent a few several months researching until i found naomi so that was the biggest challenge yeah absolutely well i'm glad you found all of them because they were really really you know awesome subjects to to watch thanks yeah is it ever a challenge getting um, individuals to agree to be in the film sometimes sometimes i mean we do a lot of discussions and meetings before we start filming and i i i think that some people are pretty much on board right from the beginning they just like the idea and their game right from the get-go some people take a little more you know a lot more conversation and i certainly explain to them that they've got control to the extent which if they ever say, you know, I don't want this to be filmed, I'm not going to film it. Um, you know, so I don't let them actually edit the film or review, you know, like right. veto things that are in the film, if that would really take away from the integrity of the process. But I, I just develop a lot of trust with them and their families to the point where I feel like they hopefully enjoy the process of the filming. Yeah. So if somebody really doesn't want to be filmed, they're not going to be in the film. Right. <laughs> you know, right. just, exactly. they're, just, they're just not a good match for the film. So yeah. I won't, I'm, not, I'm never going to push it. If someone doesn't want to be filmed, I don't push it. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, Jeff's turn, yeah. Uh, uh, tell us about the work you uh, do the, yeah. oh, at the University of New Hampshire. Well, I have a really cool job here at UNH where my whole job is about making films related to disability topics. So I've made probably 20 different films. Some of them are big films, like including Sam on Who Cares About Kelsey, Intelligent Lives. I did a, another film that was on public television called Mr. Connolly Has ALS. That's right. Which came out about a year ago, and that's about my son Samuel, his school principal, Mr. Connolly, who... Um, developed amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which is also called Lou Gehrig's disease or ALS, yeah. and lost the ability to speak and to walk. And he started communicating with Samuel and the other students in the high school with a communication device. Wow. So here's Samuel using a communication device, commu talking with his principal, who's also using a communication device. And I just thought it was such a powerful story, and his whole vision of inclusion really shaped the school. So it just became a really beautiful short film that people can watch on YouTube for free. Hmm. Mr. Connolly has ALS. So my job is about making films. So I pick topics and I do films every three or four years. I do some shorter films. Sometimes people contract me to do films that are disability related. So that helps. Yeah. And I, but the, the challenge is I have to raise my whole budget myself every year. I don't have oh. any real money from the university. So that's the really hard part. Is so I do 
speaking engagements around the country, and of course we sell the films. Yeah. I get grants, I get donations, and that's what helps me keep doing my work. Yeah. Very wow. cool. Yeah. No. Yeah. You. You've won many awards and have been nominated for an Emmy. What did it feel like to be nominated? Well, it was pretty cool. You know, I remember the first time I was in Foxborough Stadium where the Patriots played with my wife, and I was nervous, and I didn't get the award, but it was still a real honor to be there. Um, you know, so those are fun. Those awards are fun, and film festivals are fun. But I tell you, the most the most exciting things that happen usually are not related to awards or festivals. They're more about presenting, like I presented to the National Down Syndrome Congress wow. annual meeting um, like a year ago in Dallas, and that was amazing. Like to be in, to be with two thousand people in a room who all really care about disability issues and advocacy, and be able to talk to them and show them films. I mean, that to me is the most meaningful part of my job is when I am able to share my work with people that are living living the experience of disability or related to people with disabilities or working in the field and are really empowered by these messages of, you know, of advocacy and self-determination and disability rights. That's the best part of my job. Yeah, that's incredible. Like really. the Stripe Gas crew. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Just yeah. like you guys. Doing this kind of work is, is the best. Mm -hmm. Jeff? Uh, what? Why do you wish the world know about people with disabilities? Well, I think I think the biggest thing is um, is getting more people to have higher expectations for mm -hmm. people with disabilities. You know, and that's what I try and show through my films is that people with disabilities can do really the same type of work, can learn some of the same material, can be in relationships, can do all things that people without disabilities can do if given the opportunities. That's why we called our campaign for Intelligent Lives the Opening Doors Campaign. Yeah. It's just about opening doors to opportunity. And I know that for a fact that a lot of employers that take the leap and start interviewing and hiring more people with disabilities end up saying, oh my gosh, the, you know, this person with a disability has become one of my most reliable and valuable employees. You know, they love coming to work, they work really hard, they have a great attitude. You know, that's not the case with everybody, but I hear that more often than not. I hear that people with disabilities are some of the most hardworking employees, are some of the best students. They bring a, you know, a lot of positive energy into the, the workplace or the school. Um, so I, th I think that's what it is. Just, it's just really getting people to have higher expectations and not talking down to people with disabilities, which happens too, way too right. often. Absolutely, yeah. Noel was just nodding along to everything you were saying, so definitely felt strongly okay, good. in this yeah, room. Yeah, glad that, that struck with you. Yeah, yeah. We, we, talk a lot, we talk a lot about the prejudice of low expectations yeah. um, in our yep, suffering. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, I, say, I often say that you know my biggest concern for my son is Sam knows that he stays healthy, but my second biggest concern is that people don't have low expectations for him. Yeah. Our turn over here, yeah. What is the one thing you would most, most surprised. surprised to learn while making one of your films? Well, you know, it's interesting. I think that I mentioned this example earlier about Keith Jones being told, people saying to him, you know, well, when were you shot? You know, how did you get in the wheelchair? And, I, and in my film, Intelligent Lives, there was a pretty important theme around the story of Nair, where he talks about, where people in his life talk about, you know, in this very supportive school of Henderson, he's, you know, he's doing great, but because he's a tall black man with autism, they were concerned that once he got out into the community and had some typical autistic behavior, which may be, you know, sudden movements or right. acting a little bit differently than what is considered typical, you know, people like the police or others might react to him harshly, or, you know, there's even been episodes of people being shot because there was a misunderstanding in terms of somebody with autism. They thought they were being threatening when they were just doing autistic behaviors. Right. And I think that's one of the biggest surprises is some of the, the ways that disability intersects with race and gender issues in really powerful ways that I, you know, as a white man, don't experience. So I have to learn from the experience of other people who do experience that. 
So that, that to me has been very powerful to learn through my films. Yeah, wow, that's incredible. Jeff has the last one, right? Uh, yeah. If you uh, weren't, were, weren't, if you weren't a filmmaker, what would you like to do for work? Oh, wow. Let's see. Oh, maybe like being the broadcaster for the Red Sox. Yeah. Ooh, great gig! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big, I'm a big sports fan. Um, I think I'd like to be like a travel writer and just travel the world and write and take pictures about all the cool places I see, and of course bring my family along as much as I can, my wife and, and my kids. Yeah. So that would be cool. Maybe be a travel writer and photographer because I'm not sure I'd get the job as the Red Sox broadcaster. <laughs> I don't know quite enough about baseball. Well, Jeff and Noel interviewed uh, Mike Antonellis, who's the double A voice of the Portland Sea Dogs. Yeah, so, so we'll get was, you a job. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> that's the closest we've got to an end. Hey, we're actually yeah. gonna help, we're, we're going to try to make a Sea Dogs game this summer. That's on our bucket list. Sam oh, and nice. I get up there. Oh, it's real fun. That's yeah. awesome. All right, um, and now it's time for, time for what? The lightning round. The lightning, lightning round. round. Lightning round. Lightning round. So, <laughs> so this is uh, just a little bit faster paced, sort of a yes or no, this or that type of um Questions. Yep. Yeah. So, and, and Jeff, Jeff is going to kick off, right? Interviewing. Interviewing people or are uh, uh, being interviewed. Oh wow. Well, I think I think interviewing people is my job, and it's hard work, but I really like it. Being interviewed is a little more fun, I would say, than interviewing other people. I don't have to prepare as much. Yeah. <laughs> No. Watching movies or making movies? Ooh, these are tough choices. <laughs> you know, it's the same answer. Why, I love watching movies. It's one of my favorite things to do. It's totally fun. Um, making movies is, is hard work, but it's incredibly rewarding. Yeah. So it's, it's harder, but it is, it's very meaningful to me to make movies. So I'll, I'll go with making movies. Yeah. Okay. Here's a sports one. Sure. Red Sox or Patriots? Definitely Red Sox. I like the Patriots, but the violence of football kind of gnaws on me a little bit. It's pretty intense, so yeah. I definitely lean towards the Red Sox. Great choice. <laughs> What's your favorite state in the U.S.? Hmm. Well, I love living in New Hampshire, so I would say you know that certainly is. I'm very proud of my where I live now. But when I get to travel. Hmm. We just got back from Cape Cod in Massachusetts, and I had a wonderful time there. And I really like Boston, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Massachusetts as my second favorite. Two very great choices, <laughs> Jeff. Yeah. Where is the coolest? The coolest? Uh, uh, the coolest place you traveled? To for work. That was easy. It, it was actually quite hot, but it was also very cool, which was Greece. Ooh. I had to travel and do a talk in Athens, Greece, and then go to an island with my wife, and that was really amazing. That travel was to so Greece. Cool. So that that's at the top. That sounds like it. Yeah. Tell us. Yeah. No. Yeah. Summer in New Hampshire or winter in New Hampshire? Definitely summer. No context. Yeah. No con context. <laughs> I like skiing, but I can only do that so many days. Right. Summer is great. Jeff? What's one food you could eat for a year? Like exclusive? Well, there is one food I pretty much do eat for a year. I have salads for lunch almost every day. So I would say I could eat a really good, hearty, diverse salad every day. Awesome. That's a very healthy answer. I like that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite movie of all time? Ooh, tough one. Tough one. I, you know, I love the movie Boyhood. I don't know if any of you saw oh, the movie Boyhood. Yes. About the, it was filmed over like 12 years of this family growing older together, uh, the kids becoming teenagers. Very emotional. I watched it with my wife. I watched it with my family. I watched it with Isaiah. I could watch it again and again. So that's probably my favorite movie. Yeah, that's a really good one. Jeff? Who is your biggest, your biggest role model in life? Hmm. 
Well, that is a tough question. I mean, I'll, I'll give you a question that probably a lot of people would answer, which is my parents together, I would say, are my role models. I mean, they always were very focused on social justice and helping other people and connecting with other people and being involved in a lot of people's lives and very supportive of their three kids and grandkids. So I would say my parents as combined into one person would be my biggest role model. That's a great answer. And Noel, you have the last one. Yeah, tell us your best joke. Got any good jokes? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm a terrible joke teller and I don't remember a lot of jokes, but I have one joke that I, I, for some reason I remember, so hopefully this makes sense. What did the Buddhist say to the hot dog vendor? Oh Ooh. my god, uh, what? I don't know. Make me one with everything. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's a really good one. That's my favorite one we've had so far. All right. Pretty good. That was amazing. All right, good. Um, well, those were all of the questions that we had. Um, you guys would give a big thank you to Dan for coming on the show. My love is here. Yes, thank you <laughs> thank so you. much, Dan. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. Oh, I enjoyed it. My favorite interviews ever. Oh, awesome. thanks. That's thanks. so exciting. Thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, I really appreciate it. All right. Yeah. My pleasure. Oh, thank yeah. you, guys. Really enjoyed it. Right. Have Easy. a good one. Have a good one. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. You. Yeah. Listeners like you. Today we are shouting out all of the listeners of the Strivecast. Every last yeah, yeah. one of you. Thousands you and you and you point. and you in Germany, in Switzerland, We're all over the world. Germany. We are international. So thanks so much for tuning into the Strivecast. But we have a request for you, the listeners like you. Uh, if you are listening to the Strivecast right now, whatever platform you used to listen to it on, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, if you could leave us a rating and a review, that would be really awesome. We're trying to grow this show and get more and more listeners each week. So if you could right now on your cell phone that you're probably listening on, share the Strivecast with your friends and family on social media, or just even leave us a rating or review on whatever platform you use, that would be very much appreciated. Right, guys? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Please share. Please share. Please share. So, Strivecast is brought to you by listeners like yeah. you. We have tw- you. I just looked. We have 23 ratings on iTunes right now. Let's, really? Let's see if we can get to 30. Re- oh, not reviews. Ratings. Ratings. Gotcha. That's what cool. I said, right? Yeah. Um, 30 ratings by next episode. By Let's episode 41. Challenge. Can you do it? We think Let's you can. We it. believe in you. You can do it. Right, guys? If yes. No Five not. stars, please. Yeah, no, no not nothing like less. One <laughs> <stars> <laughs> Don't give us your honest opinion. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone. Oh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Thank Mom. You. <laughs> we'll be right You're back. Awesome. Back and it's time for the Cook of the week. Week, 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 down to the week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for the question of the week. Question of the Two week. parter this time. That's right. What is it, Pete? Question number one: If you made a movie, what would it be about? You're a filmmaker, Noel. What would it be about? What's, What's your, your about? film about? Um, how to. Save Lena Anna a capture from the ice from the Titanic movie. So like you'd the make Titanic two. Titanic two. Yeah. What would happen in it? Interesting. Would Leonardo live or die? Live. Hmm. Spoiler alert. Then what would happen? Then I don't know. So then he'd live, and they'd presumably get off the boat, right? Yeah. They'd get off Titanic. Then where would they go? Somewhere. Somewhere like where? To Utah. To Utah. Utah. What would <laughs> Jack and Rose do in Utah? Um, would Jack and Rose even be together? I guess. Yeah, like, would they still be together? I don't know. Well, it's your movie. You choose. I doesn't want to give it all away. You've got to buy a ticket to give us thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, are they Mormons in Utah? No. Okay. Just Cara- checking. Caribbeans in Utah. <laughs> Caribbean, Utah. All right. <laughs> Interesting. I am. Okay. Over to Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Oh, if, oh, thank you. If you made a movie, what would it be? Um, if I made. <laughs> Bu- um, buckle up. Here comes yeah, Jeff's here movie. Oh, if I made a movie, oh, God. it would be about um, me and Pete. Yeah, I um, thought that's where this was heading. Uh, 
<laughs> we were uh, uh, walking to, uh, actually, we took a boat to Egypt. You took a boat to Egypt with Pete? Yeah. A boat to Egypt and the Caribbean? You said you never wanted to go to Egypt because only dead people live there. <laughs> and uh, uh, you also told us uh, about a week ago you didn't like boats. That's right. Um, <laughs> but when we took a, 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 uh, um, a camel, mm. it's part of this, 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 uh, this movie mm -hmm. that me and Pete are making. Yeah. Um, um, it's going like, to be, it's gonna be camels. What's the movie called? Don't um, <laughs> um, Pete and Camels. Uh, uh, um, oh, come on. Uh, uh, Camelot. Oh, good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad joke. Good one. It's going to be Camelot. It's going to be called Camelot. Camelot it's, instead of a lot of camels. I get it. And, 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 um, uh, and, <laughs> and I'm going to spit. Uh, camels uh, the camels. They, yeah. Who is it going to spit on? So it's just me and you. Taking a boat to Egypt, then riding around on a lot of camels. What's the names of the camels? Um, Good question. It, it's gonna be you, Susie, and Winnie, and Olivia are all camels. And, and, and cream cheese. Cream, I'm cream cheese. cheese. <laughs> Just for the record, he pointed at me and said okay. cream cheese. Right. That's my name. Exciting. Cream cheese. Yeah. I can't wait to see Titanic two and Camel. Uh, Oh yeah, starring cream cheese. <laughs> I don't know. What okay, well that was part. Starring yeah. might be a little. <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm an extra. <laughs> took yourself from the okay, camera to you starring. Guys, come on. Okay, okay, so okay, now cool. part two of the five. Question Which of one week? of our past guests who so we've far. interviewed would have the best it. story for a movie? Okay, Noel, who do you think? Tom Cruise. No, I don't no, believe we've we interviewed Tom interviewed. Cruise yet. So think of all the people we've interviewed on the Strivecast. Who would you want to oh, make a movie about? Who? Tom Cruise is coming up in a couple weeks, hopefully. Yeah, stay tuned. Oh, the basketball player. <laughs> Dewan Eubanks? Yeah. You yeah. would make a movie about him? Yeah. Great. Great choice. He can be the Space Jam 3. Space Jam 3? Yeah. Oh, good. After the number two comes out with LeBron. Yeah. Space Jam 3. Is that happening? Yep. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Are you going to be... Breaking in? news? That's so cool. Not really breaking, Jeff but yeah. Can, Jeff can be Bugs Bunny. And that would work well. Okay. No, I would love you, Bugs All right, Bunny. Jeff, how about you? Which one of our first 39 guests should there be a movie about? Um, people we've interviewed on the show. Okay. Um, hmm. How about... Uh, John... John Jennings? Yeah. That'd be a the good one. Town uh, manager? No, uh, city manager. Yeah. From Portland? That was a good yeah. one. Or John Jonathan Sarbeck, who we just interviewed, the district attorney. Yeah. Him? Or Both, good Both of them. Uh, he, 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 he. Or John's Crazy Or John's Socks. Crazy Socks. We had a lot of Johns on the show. He, he, yeah, John Crazy Socks, too. Wow. Nice. Oh. I, 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 and all of them would be in, in awesome. All three of them could be in the same movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have another and, John. And all three guys Wait. are right on camels. Oh my god! <laughs> so all three Jones can be riding on camels, tying it all together. All guys, right. This is the best question of the week we've I, ever I, had. I think. I, I, all right. Well, this has been a Good great job. question of the week. Great job. Yes. Clap it up. Mary to Susan. Great job. We'll, right, be, we'll be right, right back. back. <laughs>《Webcast is brought to you by... Joe's Joe Spring Rolls! Tell us about the spring rolls, Jeff! Yeah, sure! I just saw you eat a plateful. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I had a plateful of uh, egg rolls, and um, <laughs> they were, were really good. Tell us about them. What did uh, you enjoy about them? Um, they, they taste like chocolate chip. Chocolate chip chocolate spring, chip rolls. spring rolls. rolls! They looked pretty big. Were they big? And tasty? Yeah. They can't see <laughs> how big. You have to tell them. That's... Uh, um, uh, it might maybe like... Uh, Jeff's holding his hands like 18 inches apart. Yep. Uh, um, uh, it was only like 12 inches apart. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Excuse you. My bad. Yeah. And, um, Don't be stupid. Stop uh, yapping. <laughs> these um, egg rolls are, are very delicious. You should try them. Delicious and nutritious. You should try them, right? And, uh, and they're really, really good. Good. If you add some duck sauce. Oh yeah, yeah. Excellent. Great Joe's ad. never skimps on the duck sauce. Never. Gotta love Joe. Yeah, they don't charge you extra for it. It's really nice. No. Lamb sauce. Lamb sauce? I don't know if they make that. I don't that. think that's a thing. What were you going to ask him? I was going to ask him, how can people advertise here? Your ad here, what does that mean? I, 
you bring more ads here. Bring more ads that's here. Right. That's right. Joe's been a great supporter for a long time. Huge. He's fake. Too bad he's pretend. Too bad he is pretend. <laughs> we need. It's time for some real advertisers. So, if you're interested, shoot us an email. We have a special going on throughout the month of July. Uh, reach out to us at strivecast at pslstrive.org. It is and too we'll bad be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to this webcam. <laughs> yeah. We've got a new, new segment. segment. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's it called? The new segment is called what? Yakky with you. Yakky with you. I love you. Yakky with you. I like, like it. That. On the fly. This is going to be a hypothetical question <laughs> asked to the gentleman every week. Or maybe just this once, depending on how it goes. Yeah, we'll but see. Today's question is... <laughs> If you could breed a hybrid animal made out of any two species, what two would you choose? No. A, a frog. A frog? A frog and, and a... Toad. <laughs> <laughs> so it wouldn't really look that much no, different. No, frog and a flower. But Any, I guess, species. Yeah, species. Yeah. A what would you call the frog-flower combination? Flower. No, a bleeding heart. Because <laughs> it, a frog sometimes leaps on something and something eats the frog, then it has a bleeding heart. And that's mm. also a type of flower. Yeah. So well a, flower, done. a flower that just like jumps around? Yeah. Fascinating. Pretty cool. Oh, like Johnny jump ups when it oh. jumps to a lily pad. And all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Jeff. Very good. Oh uh, yes. It. Here we go. Your turn. What's your two species? Yakin with um, you. Yeah. How about yakin with you? My question um, is um, a cow or a moon? <laughs> uh, cow and a moon. Okay. That's what would you call your cow moon? Movies. Oh, get it. Why don't you just call it moon? How about moon? Moon. Moon. All right. All right. That's pretty good. I think this went well. It's pretty good. What about mine? Some, oh, okay. Back to you. Producer Yakin Susie. with Susie. <laughs> what about my species is a fly and a dog. What do you call fly that? Fly and a dog. Fly dog. A flying dog fish. Oh, <laughs> love it. Flying dog fish. Right. Oh, like a sea dog. So that's our new segment, Yakin, Yakin with, with you. Yakin with you. What's the theme song? Yakin, Yakin with you. 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 Ooh, 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 ooh. Sure. <laughs> and that, I think, is as good as we're going to get. That's so. right. So we will be right back before we mess it up. <laughs> It's time, time to, to wrap, wrap, it up, wrap, wrap it up, 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 wrap it up. Oh my god. Jeff is becoming the theme song guy. I know, What's you're going losing over your there? job over here. I don't know. I don't know, you're a little sleepy. Mr. Low Energy. Mm, well, All right. Well, really thank you so much to Dan Habib for coming on the Strivecast. That was an amazing interview yeah. and just such amazing movies that he makes. And I hope that everybody listening will go out and watch them. He's got a lot, one called Including Samuel, one called Intelligent Lives, another one called uh, Who Cares About Kelsey and some others that he mentioned. So go check out all of his work online. Um, great thank, interview yeah. and great episode. Guys. Yeah, Good I job. think you guys had high energy today. Um, I think that we introduced a new segment today yeah. that might stick around. That's right. The Yacking with You. Yacking with You. Uh, uh, yeah, that was a Jeff good. original. That good was job. Good. good job, Jeff. Thanks so much to our uh, two producers in the house today, Whitney and Susie, and who are also doubling as the engineer because yeah. Ryan is out on vacation. Come back soon, Ryan. We, we miss, miss you, you so much. <laughs> so thank you, Whitney and Susie. That was awesome. And yeah. shout out to Ryan again on his anniversary with Hillary. And he All right. Yes. I so, guess. again, we're having a challenge trying to get to That's 40 right. plus reviews. So, the number has just changed on iTunes. Many times. But please. 
do that. Please do that. We would love some ra- more ratings and reviews on iTunes and all the platforms, so that would be great. Do you want to give a quick 20th anniversary plug? Sure. Strive's 20th anniversary is coming. It is Jan- going to be held on January 25th, 2020. Uh, 20th and 2020 would be pretty cool. And uh, it's going to be at the Sable Oaks Sheridan um, in South Portland. And we hope you'll join us. Lots more information coming, but we're putting together a host committee. If you're interested, yeah. um, let us know. Strivecast at pslstrive.org. Send it. Also, email. send us your guest ideas um, yeah. for who you think would be good. We've got some great ones coming up. Um, over the next couple of weeks. Hey, you know what? And if you're listening in another country, because we've seen we've had some German and other oh, international God. listeners, could you write us in and tell us where you're listening from? Or if you're listening in like another state or somewhere cool, right? Tell or us. Just in general. Yeah, or just in general. Write to us at strivecast at pslstrive.org because we want to know where our listeners are tuning in from, right, guys? Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool if we had listeners in like every country in the world? Show me up. Let's start with every state in the country. Yeah, let's start with that. Show yeah. Me Okay, Okay. well, this has been a fantastic episode. Thanks again to Dan Habib. Want to sign off? Thank you. Thank you. you. Goodbye.